You're watching Ramping Up Your English from RVTV Voices. This is segment two of episode 55. We use a content-based approach in improving English skills. Now, although we got to see a lot of the cavey eating from a bowl, there wasn't a whole lot of visual context. Given that, how much of the video were you able to understand? While assessing yourself constantly can be counterproductive to overall our objective to improving your English, it is helpful from time to time to see if your skills in English are improving. Now, this calls for some honesty in two directions. The most obvious is the temptation to overinflate your ability. That could result in overconfidence, lack of motivation to undergo further growth. But less obvious is a tendency toward modesty, failing to recognize growth when it's occurred. Now, this can also sabotage motivation, leaving you feeling frustrated and disappointed at your perceived lack of growth. Now, the system we use is highly subjective. That's its weakness. But if you dedicate yourself to being brutally honest about this process, you should get a good indication of your growth in English proficiency over time. So what is this process to which I'm referring? It's simply watching a video and indicating the percent of the content you understand. Now, if you understand this program at all, including what I'm saying now, you can't honestly say that you comprehend 0%. It's equally unlikely that you'll understand 100% of what you hear in the video unless you're already at a place of mastery. And if that's the case, you may not need to avail yourself to the help offered by this program, although you're certainly welcome to keep watching for the interesting content and engaging video. The idea of self-assessment is to watch a video and estimate the percentage of the narration you understand. Let's have you do that with the next video. Now, when I was in Villa Hermosa, Mexico, I saw this animal cross my path. Now, I thought it was an anteater, but I later learned that I had seen a coati. A few exist along the border with Mexico, but most of them live in Mexico, Central America, and South America's tropical and subtropical areas, including Brazil. They're especially at home in the forest. Now, coatis live in bands of about 40 females. They run off intruding males until the breeding season. That's when they'll accept one male to mate with the entire band. As for that cone-shaped nose, it uses that to scavenge in the crevices for small rodents and invertebrates as well as plant matter. As an agile climber, it also feeds on fruit. Let's watch this video and learn more about coatis. Coatis, pointed-nosed animals I once mistook for anteaters. I was in southern Mexico at the time, the lower part of their range, which extends north to the American southwest. That pointed cone-shaped snout is what fooled me. Coatis eat berries, lizards, mice, and plants, not so much ants. These coatis live at wildlife images near Merlin, Oregon. Their diet helps determine one of Wildlife Images' educational outreach summer camp themes. Coatis are one of four animals that teach young campers about the dietary needs of animals at this rehabilitation center and the importance of diet. Campers pass animal enclosures on their way to preparing meals that are healthy for the animals. They're already learning about coatis as they approach the tent where they'll learn to be animal chefs. Inside the tent, the campers put on gloves, keeping the human scent away from the animal's food. Everybody got your gloves going on? All right. Campers listen to instructions, learning what they'll be doing in the tent. What are you guys doing? Uh, the coatis. Do you guys remember who the coatis are? The wolves. The coatis are those little oh, guys that we just passed on the way down here. They actually kind of look like, some people think they look like an anteater. They have that big long nose and a really big long tail. 
Um, we are going to make diets for them, and then we have a really special thing that we get to do with them. We get to go into their enclosure while they are in what we call their safety, the area where they sleep, and they're in there right now. And um, because they're in there, they're safe and we're safe. And we get to go into their enclosure, and we get to put their diets in their enclosure and kind of hide them in different spots, and then we'll be able to watch them go in We'll let them out of their safety and we'll be able to watch them go in and, and hunt for the food like they would in the wild. To mask the scent of humans in the Kawadi enclosure, feathers are sprayed with a scented mist. So very little animals, animal scents are much stronger than ours, so we only spray a little bit. Okay, we'll start with the So you can the campers gather dandelions for the animals. The Kawadi group is excited. They've gathered grapes and other food, and they're ready to feed the Kawadis. All of the campers leave the tent and proceed toward the Kawadi enclosure. The Kawadi group enters the enclosure. Their campmates watch while they strategically place the food they've prepared. Yeah, so, all right. With the food packed away, the kids leave the enclosure. Yeah, when everybody's out, we'll open it. Oh, cool. Okay. The Kawadis are released from their safe house into the enclosure where they seek out their breakfast. The children watch excitedly as the Kawadis find the food they so carefully placed in the enclosure. Oh my god, oh, it's getting away. He found my green. Wait, he found my blackberries. No, he's finding my food. He found my food. No. Oh, I see the leaves. Nobody has that my food yet. Oh, oh yeah, well, yeah. Bubble tea. Mm. Okay. Mm. 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 Kawadis are found in the American Southwest, and they range as far south as Central America. A Kawadi's tail is typically as long as its body. That helps them balance while climbing. You can see these Kawadis and numerous other animals at wildlife images. For over 35 years, Wildlife Images has rehabilitated animals that are injured or otherwise in need of help. They plan even more educational outreach.